Okay, so last time we were talking about the C3V point group. Um, and we made the matrices for the different um, classes of symmetry operations, which we know are to be E. We had two C3s, so C3 and C3 twice. And then we had three sigma Vs. And we used uh, the XYZ basis. So this is for our XYZ basis. And we studied how the different symmetry operations could be, re could be represented as matrices that could then transform XYZ into the symmetry equivalent new XYZ coordinates. And we were able to find uh, example matrices. So E is always 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. I'll just show one of the C3s because um, other one is in the same class. Remember, this was the unit circle dealio. So I believe this was, let me make sure I get this right, negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2, uh, 0, negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half, 0. Actually, now that I think about it, it's got to be this way. So this has got to be po po positive for counterclockwise. And this is, yes, that's right. And then 0, 0, 1. And then one of the sigma v's, um, I'm only going to show one of them again, is, let's see, let's pick the kind of the easiest one, which is the one along the x-axis. So that's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Okay, so we're able to represent the symmetry operations for the x, y, z as matrices. Okay, and then last time we talked about that the characters, which is the sum of the diagonal, the sum of the trace, is the same for each of the operations that are in the same class, which is why I only showed one of the matrices for C3 and one matrix for sigma V. So what we can do is if we then represent, so here's gamma x, y, z. So this is our basis. We can then write the trace, so this is the chi, so chi of E equals 3, and then the chi of C3 dot dot dot. So this is going to be negative 1 half plus negative 1 half plus 1 is 0, and then this trace is 1. So uh, let me rewrite this just to be clear. So 3, 0, 1, this is going to be our gamma xyz equals this. So these are the traces of the matrices for the 3 by 3 matrices for the operations for the XYZ basis set. And so this is what's called the reducible representation. Representation. And I'll get to what that means in a little bit. Uh, but the point is, um, if you have, for any basis set, like we were talking about, if we have uh, let's say n elements, let me write this in yellow, so up here. So your basis could be anything, right? n atoms, often atoms, bonds, orbitals, et cetera, et cetera. So then basically all your operations will be, will end up being n by n matrices, right? n by n. So if we're in the C3V point group, but we have n atoms, like 100 atoms, each symmetry operation will be a 100 by 100 uh, matrix. So that would be horrible. So, um, uh, so like I said, I was saying in class, this is, the n by n matrix is impossible to deal with. But fortunately, what we can do is then block diagonalize the matrix into smaller matrices, and then uh, build this up, the n by n matrix, from a combination of some limited number of the block diagonalized matrix matrices. So the block diagonalized matrices are what's going to be called block diagonalized. And then these will be our irreducible representations. Let me write this in big blue. Irreducible. Oh, I'm off the screen. Irreducible representations. We can also call them irreps, just for short, irreps. 
So again, we can build up any n elements as a sum of irreducible representations, and the number of them um, we'll get to later of how we know which ones are irreducible. So for this example, um, when we're block diagonalizing, let's look, we have to figure out kind of which uh, matrices we can block dives down to. And then so if you look at this C3, what we see, as we saw in class with our C4V example, um, for this x and y uh, 2 by 2, we have what are called these off-diagonal elements. So because we have off-diagonal elements, we are saying here, let me draw an arrow, x, y transform together. And that's because if you do a C3 on your ammonia, for example, um, our final, like anything that starts with x will end up having a component that starts with y. So right, if we have our x vector, we do a C3, our x prime, here's x prime, has components from both the original x and the original y. So you can't just say positive x minus x. We have components of y, right? This is our y component, and here's our x component. So because of that, they transform together. So when we block diagonalize them, we have to block diagonalize it down to a 2 by 2. Here's our 2 by 2. Oops. 2 by 2. On the other hand, in these uh, for all the symmetry operations in the C3D point group, the z component can be block diagonalized. So z transformed by itself, by itself. So when we look at the irreducible representations that make up C3V, we know there's got to be at least one that's kind of of order two and one that's of order one. So order two, order one. Um, and then so the remaining question is, are there other irreps that we need? Because X, Y, Z is not necessarily the complete basis set, right? So we might be missing irreps. So we might not be able to uh, build up every single possible symmetry operation or you know, every, every basis set using just these two. So AK301. Um, so we can break this down into gamma X, Y. It's just going to be the traces of our two by twos. Two by two, two by two. So the irrep of gamma xy is going to be equal to this sum. So two for e, negative one half, negative one half, minus one for c three. Okay, sorry, this is kind of getting out of hand, but uh, and then for sigma v it's zero. So negative two minus one zero is the irrep for xy. And then if we have z that transformed by itself, this is going to be just the diagonal of a one by one matrix, which is one, one, one. And you can see that these two sum up together to form our gamma x, y, z, which was three, zero, one. But so we've, broken down, we've broken down our x, y, z basis into two irreducible representations. And then so in the next video, we'll talk about how we can find any remaining irreps that might be missing from x, y, z, and then we can build a character table out of this.